Yeah, welcome back. Well, last week at Parks in New South Wales, a little gathering to turn the first sod with a very special historic shovel made in 1912, mind you, marking the construction kickoff of the 1700 kilometer Melbourne to Brisbane inland rail. Well, the track, which uh, will be used by double stacked freight trains, is set to be a game changer for rural Australia, whatever the metro audience might think about it. The first leg of construction, a short stretch from Parks to Narromine, is now officially underway. For more, I spoke to ARTC Managing Director John Fullerton. John Fullerton, nice to talk. Now, last week you had the turning of the first sod with a very old uh, shovel, I think. Must have been a good day. It was a great day. It was a, a great day to celebrate the start of construction uh, between Parks to Narromine. What exactly will this first leg entail? Well, Parks to Narromine is about... Uh, 100 kilometres of existing track that we operate, a regional line, and we've also got about five kilometres of Greenfields track to connect uh, that new section with the east-west uh, track to Perth. Yes, yeah, so you're starting in one of, I, I guess, one of the easier parts, uh, largely upgrades, I would imagine? That's true. I mean, we always said that Parks to Narromine would be the first uh, construction phase, and then that will be followed next year by the section from Narrow Bride to North Star. So we were focusing on those existing tracks to upgrade them to uh, mainline standard and to accommodate those uh, long double stack trains. John, this inland rail has been a long time coming. A lot of people have said it was a white elephant. What value is it delivering? Well, I think there's two phases of inland rail, really. The, the construction phase, a $10 billion project, employ around about 16,000 people during the construction phase up to 2025. So provides an enormous benefit to regional towns like Parks. I was there this week and spoke to a, a lot of the local people around the opportunities that this new construction of the, of the section for Parks to Narromine will deliver. So a lot of local benefits during the construction phase, but it's all been built for a purpose. It should have been built you know, many years ago, but Inland Rail will deliver a whole new corridor between Melbourne to Brisbane it will allow a lot more of the freight to be carried by rail, which is uh, how it should be carried, particularly over the long distance. But it will also provide a world-class rail connection from some of the most productive farming regions in Australia to, for farmers to be able to export their products through the ports that we connect to already at, uh, in Brisbane, in Newcastle, Port Kembla, Melbourne and, and uh, Port Botany. So it's uh, very important for Australia for the next 50 to 100 years to have this railroad line built to handle the population growth and the, and the big demand in freight that will be required over that period. And obviously you're there uh, right in the middle of the boom, the, the infrastructure part of the cycle. Where are you getting your raw materials for all this track from? Well, Inland Rail is Australia made, really. We're doing uh, a lot of the material will come from various suppliers. Uh, for the first section from Parks to Narromine, 15,000 tonnes of steel rail will be coming out of Wyala. We've already delivered all that steel along that corridor already. Uh, the concrete sleepers that will be used uh, for the whole uh, project will be, will be constructed or manufactured in Australia. The first 200,000 sleepers have really all been delivered for the section from Parks to Narromine. They were manufactured in New South Wales. And a lot of the quarry products, the earth, uh, and also purchasing motor vehicles and, and hiring heavy plant will all come from Australian businesses predominantly in those regional areas. And would you say you're on track at the moment, you're on schedule? Yes, we are. I mean, uh, we've put a lot of time and effort into getting all the pre-construction work uh, uh, underway, uh, particularly on that Parks to Narromine. We've completed the final designs with the engineering companies that we engaged. We awarded a contract uh, back in August to InLink, which is a joint venture between Fulton Hogan and BMD Construction. Uh, they were present at the turning of the sod this week. Uh, they've commenced work and we've got all the material laid out along the corridor. So uh, we're underway. A uh, $300 million construction component, our first major construction for the entire uh, Melbourne to Brisbane railway line. But along the whole corridor now we've got engineers out there doing the final design all for all those sections uh, along that whole inland rail corridor between Melbourne and Brisbane. People say the missing link is that last bit through to the port of Brisbane. What's being done there? Well, there is an existing line, a standard gauge line that was built back in 1995 that does link 
the port, uh, Acacia Ridge to the port of Brisbane. It's a shared corridor with the passenger trains that, uh, as we know, in all those capital cities, the number of trains are increasing. So it's a shared corridor. Uh, and so there, over time, there will need to be, we need to look at ways on how we can improve the capacity for the connection to uh, the port of Brisbane. But there is an existing narrow gauge and standard gauge line there today. But won't that be a, a blockage by the time you've got this U Butte uh, inland rail up and running? Well, most of the freight that we're using Melbourne to Brisbane inland rail is freight that's uh, generated in Australia and is consumed by Australians. So yeah, that uh, is the case today with all the freight that gets delivered to Acacia Ridge is uh, consumed by Queenslanders or generated by Queenslanders for export to the southern states. So that will be the primary source of the volumes that will be carried on inland rail from day one. But of course we recognise the importance to provide better connections to the ports and a lot of work's being done between the federal government and, and the Queensland government now to look at what will need to be done to upgrade and improve the connections to the port. There is a connection there today. Uh, it will use, serve its purpose for the interim period, but over the longer term there need to, need to be a better solution. As I understand it, uh, the inland rail is now going via Wellcamp Airport, the Wagners Airport near Toowoomba. So presumably there will be more export-driven business out of there eventually as well. That's true. I mean, the Toowoomba catchment area is a very important generator of freight and a consumer of freight. But also the agricultural districts in around Moree, around Gundawindi, those sorts of areas, you know, currently move a lot of their produce for export by road uh, through to the port. Inland rail will change that. Uh, it's connected to, you know, the major freight centres. It goes through some of the most productive farming regions. It will provide a spine to allow farmers to export their products far more efficiently, bigger trains, heavier axle loads, all lowers cost to producers and that's good for them and it's good for the Australian economy. And John, how are you going uh, where the rail is going straight through uh, the farmers, land, community consultation, uh, uh, villages? Have you got a reasonable relationship or is there more work to be done in terms of settling communities and landowners? Look, there's always work to be done. I mean, this is a, a big project and like any project that's being built in Greenfields areas like the, we do have between Narrow Mine and Narrow Bry, and in many parts of the Queensland border, there are a lot of new construction will be required through some of those farmlands. And yes, uh, a lot of farmers are concerned about the impact the railway will have on their businesses. So what sort of deals are you doing with them? Well, I think the first, what the process we're going through at the moment, we've got a, a two kilometre study corridor that we've got engineers looking at where will they finally locate that final 60 metre wide rail corridor. So the numbers of people that will be impacted will reduce as we go through that process. But of course, you know, we'll, we'll look at ways to try to avoid cutting farms in half where we can, but where, we, that where that's inevitable, we'll be looking at how we can ensure that you know, farm machinery, stock, whatever is necessary to make those farms productive, we will look at how we can do through that the construction phase. So we're working, we've got a big team of people out there, very committed to working with every individual landowner to try and explain how it will be built, what it will look like, how we can minimise the impact on their farms but also to where we do have to acquire land to compensate them fairly for selling that land to us to allow that railway to be built. And finally, can I ask, you're on track for 2024-25, yeah? Absolutely. We are started in Parks and Narrow Mine, the first big construction project, and we're now underway with the Narrow Bride and North Star to happen next year. And on budget? It's a $10 billion project over a 10-year period, so we're yeah. looking good. John Fullerton, congratulations on the first turn of the sod, as I say, and we look forward to following you on the way. Yeah, thanks, Tiggy. Thanks you very much.